Welcome to The Lex Factor, a lawfully good podcast where we'll brief you on the business of law so you can build a better practice and capture more billable hours. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Lex Factor. It's your host, Lauren, here. And Brad. I'm, I'm not going to say my title this time. I was co-host. I'm just going to be Brad. Oh, I thought you were going to say CIO. No, no, no. We, we don't talk about that. Mm. Yeah, just Brad today. We just found him off. The, he doesn't actually work for a lexicon. What? Um, we, just, we just found him. He doesn't just, have a title. Yeah. I was a, a rescue. Oh, you were a rescue like Frank's pups. Oh. The, our peop, our, our uh, listeners don't know about Frank yet. Yeah, that's true. So, so we were Frank? talking to Frank ahead of time, so we know about his, his rescue dogs. And so I propose we just talk about his dogs the whole time. But uh, my boss actually reminded me we have to talk legal things, too. And it's not very everybody important. cares about the dogs. A lot of whatever. people do, but just not everybody. Yeah, and that's yeah. probably not the point of this, this episode. But, no, you know, no, I, no. Get it. I, so, get it. So I get it. So do we have a guest? We do have a guest. Oh, okay. Yes. So we are actually back today with Frank Ramos Jr. Welcome back, Frank. Thanks for having me again. You got to get Frank his claps. So, yeah, we actually had you on the show before. So thank you again for coming back. Um, you are the managing partner over at Clark Silverglade, correct? Yes. That's correct. Yeah. That's right. So tell us a little bit about what you do, your background, and what brings you here today. Sure. Uh, I'm at Clark Silver Glade. It's a litigation firm here in Miami, about 10 of us. We do commercial products and employment, mostly on the defense side. I've been here since 98, graduated in 97, and the firm's been around for about 28 years or so. So you it's are quick. how old? No, I'm just kidding. I am 49. <laughs> I turned 50. Oh, oh when's you your go. birthday? Hold on. You just cut out a little bit. When do you turn 50? October 8th. Oh, okay. I was hoping you didn't say today or something. And then I oh, was no, like, no, oh, no. somebody send the man some cake. We would have to sing for sure. I know. You would go oh, take it away. No, no. We have to wait till his birthday. We'll have oh, it well, back on, on his birthday. birthday. It's my birthday today. Today is my, <laughs> wait, my birthday. Wait, you said October 8th? <laughs> yes, yes. It yes. is, yes. Okay. I'm a Libra. You will get a special gift from Lexicon on October 8th, oh, 2021. Kind of it's going to take a while because we got a while to go, but you're going to get it. Is it? Am I going to jump out of a cake? It is going to be Brad in a cake. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. No one wants that. He says that. dreams don't come true. I know, right? <laughs> so, Frank, we talked a lot about learning and thriving through the pandemic. And so I specifically wanted to talk about leadership because I think this is another area that a lot of firms are still lacking and honestly, all industries. How do you keep your team engaged? How do you how do you drive your team? How do you connect with your team? And then clients, too. You know, how do you really – everything is virtual. How are you engaging with them? So I thought we could talk about leadership post-pandemic and, and during the pandemic. No, absolutely. I think we're in a very different world now and we'll probably be in this world for at least a few more weeks, if not a few more months. I like weeks. And people, I like weeks. Yeah, I prefer weeks too. Yeah. <laughs> we have to be very strategic about staying in touch and staying on top of our team because this is very foreign. I mean, yeah. uh, now I just we've kind of gotten accustomed and used to it, but think of back to January 2020, if you would have told us like we're going to all be working from home and there's this thing called Zoom and we're going to log in and see each other virtually and and even when we're back at work, we're basically going to be connecting through Zoom and mm-hmm. wearing masks and socially distancing. It's it's very foreign. We're very social creatures. I mean, that's just inherent in who we are and in our society. And we have not been social creatures for about a year now. <laughs> and that's taking a toll on some of us and many of us uh, different ways. And so there's this other level of leadership that people, whether they're law firms or companies, have to understand and appreciate. They really have to keep an eye out for their team and really stay in touch with them, stay focused on them, stay in tune to what those needs are and try to meet those needs as best as possible, more so than ever before. Yeah. So what does that look like? You know, you you want to see those signs if somebody's not engaged, you want to understand what's going on. What does that look like? What do you do to stay, you know, close to your team? I mean, I think first you have of all, you need to have a baseline of what your team is like. And, you know, if you've been uh, at the same company or firm for a while and the people you're working with are folks you know well, you're going to notice a change, you know. And obviously at first, we all kind of assumed this would take a few weeks. I mean, I thought, you know, when our firm closed down in March, um, you know, we thought, well, you know, the pandemic will be over by April maybe. And we're still here a year later. Um, (laughs) And so... You know, having been at this firm as long as I have been, I've been here now 23 years or so, and most of the people here have been here for a long period of time. I inherently know what they're like. I know how they feel, how they react to certain things, and you can kind of gauge when people aren't behaving 
the way they're used to behaving. You know, some people are naturally quiet, some people are naturally boisterous. Um, and so you have to kind of compare what they used to be to how they are now and determine what's affecting them, you know, him or her, and try to help them through that. And sometimes it's just, you know, spending more time with them uh, over the phone or by texting or mm-hmm. by Zoom. Sometimes it's trying to uh, engage with them on things that are outside of work. Uh, but you know, it's the pandemic and the social isolation is affecting all of us differently. Mm-hmm. And it's affecting us much more than others. And you just have to be cognizant of that. I yeah. think one, people have to be aware of that too. They have to make uh, a concerted effort to reach out to their team. And there has to be free flow of communication. There shouldn't be any repercussions or any sort of backlash. And somebody saying, look, I'm just not doing well under these circumstances mm-hmm. and trying to help them through that situation as best as possible. Yeah, I'm glad you said what you said, because I do. I think there's the tech side of it and making sure you guys are adapting and understanding how you can engage with with clients and others and actually doing it. But then we talked about this a little bit before, too, and I know I talk about it all the time. Um, But really taking that extra step to engage with your clients or whoever you're talking to. So maybe it's worthwhile, you know, you're having a Zoom call with them. You're just having a straight up phone call or you're texting. Maybe that is the time where you have that opportunity to say, hey, I know your kid had a soccer game this weekend. So try to support that that alternative method of communication a little more by adding in some some more personalization there. I think that helps as well too because as much as we've all gotten used to Zoom and virtual meetings, it's still not ideal. You know what I mean? And March last year, we all struggled and, and hurried real quick to get new processes in place. I think we were blessed on the lexicon side because we have clients in almost every single state. So we're already virtually communicating with them on a regular basis, but that's not the case for everybody. So sometimes it's a little easier, but then on the flip side now, like I'm freaking exhausted. I am so sick of not seeing my team in person. I'm so sick of not being able to like have a team happy hour and catch up. And so I think it's just... It's It's all catching up with us. So even as hard as it was a year ago and how much change we had to do, it's almost like just this ever evolving change because we overcame one struggle of just figuring out how to meet with people virtually. And now it's like this whole other struggle of I'm sick of this. I just want to go back to normal. No, I agree. I think the tech part of it was actually the easiest part. I think most firms and companies within 30 days, 45 days had figured that out. And, and it's great. You know, obviously now we have certain technology we can use in a foregoing basis. From law firm's perspective, you know, ha- handling hearings uh, via Zoom or doing client meetings sometimes via Zoom or depositions via Zoom will save time and energy in, in, in the long term. And that's certainly one of the pluses of all of this. But much more important was sort of the human connection that we've all lost uh, and that we've tried to recreate virtually. Uh, but virtual is sort of a, a second, sometimes a, a distant second, depending on how it's done. So, uh, you know, it's incumbent on anybody in a leadership position, or even you don't even have to have a title, but everybody at the firm has some responsibility to kind of look out for at least one other person at their firm or company, make sure that he or she is doing okay. Mm-hmm. I'm just really curious, you know, we've talked uh, a lot about the negative impact that COVID had Um, Do you have some positive examples? Did maybe one of your attorneys or others flourish during this uh, pandemic or relate to it? Well, I think, you know, taking a step back, um, I think our whole profession has done much better. I don't know what it is about lawyers and law firms, but we really sort of trail behind when it comes to technology. And COVID made us catch up with all the other industries and professions that are out there. They're already doing what we're doing now in this platform and other platforms. Um, And again, I'm not sure why we're so adverse to it, but, you know, the fact that we weren't already having virtual hearings, the fact we weren't already doing virtual depositions and having virtual meetings was always kind of a head scratcher for me. And now that everybody has the technology, has learned and mastered it, and realizes its pluses and benefits, that's probably something that can continue forward after the pandemic subsides. And I think that's certainly a positive. And I think for younger lawyers who were always attuned and acclimated to the technology, they were able to really shine at their firms because they were able to teach more seasoned and more senior lawyers how to use it and how to like learn from it. And I think even lawyers who've been practicing 20, 30 or more years 
um, who may have had some hesitancy about using it have come around finally and realized there's some pluses. You know, I, yeah. I think early on people thought, well, it's only be a few weeks. I don't need to learn the technology. <laughs> well, if you're into it, you, you know, you, you've had to learn the technology. There's just no more getting past it. Um, and so just as a profession that we kind of went by kicking and screaming, I think it was certainly a valuable lesson for all of us. Oh, yeah. And regardless of what happens, you know, everything goes back to normal. Pandemic is, quote unquote, gone. There is that client expectation, too. You know, this is working for your clients. There is going to be an expectation of, hey, Frank, you didn't make me come into the office for our last meeting. I really don't want to come in again. Can we just do Zoom? So it it is Uh, here to say regardless. Um, Yeah. And uh, for corporate clients, I mean, the fact that they don't have to spend money to have you fly somewhere or stay in a hotel. I mean, you know, it's uh, I, I think things are going to change dramatically uh, in terms of a lot of the cost centers, uh, which I think benefits everybody. And it'll certainly reduce uh, legal expenses and so forth. Yeah. Um, and but I think we're all waiting to get back to the po- point where, like you mentioned, having happy hours and lunches and, yeah. and just hanging around the conference room and sort of talking through your cases. Yeah. But I'm glad you said that, too. I mean, the extra money, it's money that you can invest in your firm if you're not spending it on online like marketing. Yeah, so online marketing. There, there we go. go. <laughs> um, so question. You seem to have this pretty down pat, Frank, which is awesome. How do you you have a, a team of 10, I believe you said. How do you really how do you understand, like, how do you read them? How do you know if something's bugging them, if if there's something they need help with, if they're not directly telling you and you can't engage with them in person? And I think that's part of being a good leader, too, and that's something that we need to all do better in person, but especially virtually. How do you read those cues that may not be there? I mean, I think if you know anybody well enough, you can read their body language pretty well. Mm-hmm. And you also know what they enjoy talking about, what they don't. And so if there's a subject matter they typically talked about and they haven't talked about it in a while, uh, or they're carrying themselves a certain mm-hmm. way that they don't typically carry themselves in, and those are obviously telltale signs. I think I think a sign of a good leader is somebody who observes and really pays attention to their team. Uh, both in good and bad times and sees how they react to situations and keeps a mental note of those reactions so they can have that as a point of comparison going forward. And if those reactions change and that something's going on. Yeah. So when you're, you know, you're kind of going through your Zoom meetings, you're picking up on cues, do you reach out to them separately then? How do you how do you correct or correct the course, if you will, if you find that somebody just isn't carrying themselves like they used to, like you had mentioned? Yeah, you don't obviously call them out in front of a large meeting. But you may mention. <laughs> Why are you so fact. different, Frank? I've <laughs> Brad, noticed. You look sad Why? today. Yeah. Are Why? you crying, that's... Frank? <laughs> what What is wrong? That's right. That's right. And so <laughs> I'll, you know, I may text. I generally text people. If we, uh, I don't know what it mm. is about texting, but it just I'll text somebody and say, "Oh, you know, I noticed that you know you were." not engaged or, you know, you weren't really saying much or whatever it is, whatever I caught on. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes I don't even say that. I'll just ask them, you know, Hey, how are you doing? And, um, and if they're not doing well, they'll actually volunteer. Like, yeah, you know, something's yeah. going so on. Or I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. You know, people just get, you know, I'm tired of this is our fifth zoom call and I'm <laughs> tired of being out of the office or whatever else. And, um, and it, it's really gotten to the point, I think, that a lot of companies and firms are sort of at a uh, flat inflection point where, you know, what are we going to do? You know, we're still either working remotely or if we're working in the offices, we're separated uh, and still socially distancing. This is getting old. Um, yep. And you, you hear that comment and that refrain occurring more and more and people kind of wondering, okay, when, 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 when's the, when does this end? And I guess, the summer is probably a good uh, point where we're all kind of considering considering the um, vaccines and so so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think people need to have some sort of endpoint. You need to provide people some sort of endpoint, even if the goalposts move. I think the idea that I think recently some folks said, "Well, you want to do this until 2022." I'm like, "Wow, really? We're really just until 2022?" <laughs> um, and, you know, I guess if we have to, we have to. But then uh, the further out this gets pushed out, and the further we move away from you know going to vacations or traveling in packs or doing group related activities, you really have to start thinking, "Okay, how are we going to make up for that?" and become a little bit creative about that. 
Yeah, definitely. I can't remember the last time I had a Zoom happy hour. I feel like our first couple months, you know, our managers and friends and family, they're like, let's do Zoom. Let's all get together. Let's chat. I don't think I've done it in months. And so I I do think that's part of what's missing is people, because you constantly have to make an effort and you get to a point where you're kind of sick of making an effort, let's be honest. Um, And then when you do have these Zoom happy hours, you're like, we've done this 42 times. I really don't want (laughs) to do it again. This is boring. Um, so I was really wondering why you stopped calling. I guess that that was it. Because of you your just, wife. You no, just, I'm just <laughs> wow. We'll cut that part. It's okay. It was funny though, right? No. It, no. Okay. it was. It was funny. <laughs> no, but anyway. So what I was getting at, Frank, is. we're all missing it because no one's trying as hard. But I also think on the flip side, we're kind of sick of of doing it because it's not as unique and special anymore. So given that weird circumstance, how do you keep your team engaged and how do you, you, you make them feel like they still have a voice and that you guys are still this, this cool group that gets together and gets, gets stuff done. I mean, on, on the business side, you try to engage them on the individual cases and have them, you know, talk about the matters in your group setting. It might be on a phone call. Sometimes it's better just to get some people on the phone. We used to talk to people on the phone all the time. And then Zoom became somewhat ubiquitous. And sometimes people are like, oh, do you want to run Zoom? I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> just call me. <laughs> right. um, we don't have to do the Zoom thing all the time. And then on the personal side, um, if you know someone well enough, you know what their hobbies are, what their interests are, what shows they watch, what books they read. You know, ask them, oh, you know, how's that show going? You know, have you read this book? I came across this book you might be interested in. Um, Always trying to keep the conversation to focus on their interests. What about uh, virtual awards or, you know, we talked about Zoom meetings, happy hours, things like that. Does your firm do any type of awards or get togethers in that way that's just, you know, just for your firm? No, we haven't, although I've noticed that a number of trade associations, voluntary bar associations do that. And I think they're, it's a good idea. I think uh, I've attended a few uh, sort of business meetings where they hand out awards over the past year, six months for accomplishing whatever. And it's a nice way to be recognized and have your name put out there. And our specific firm hasn't done that, although I do notice that uh, there's been an uptick both on LinkedIn and other platforms of people promoting and advocating and sort of highlighting their individual uh, attorneys. You know, mm-hmm. they'll have, you know, attorney of the week or month or whatever else. And I think it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, definitely. Brad was asking because he was he keeps hinting at like the need for us to give him an award for something. <laughs> and it's like, Brad, we got it. I mean, he's been bugging the marketing team for ages Specific, to be named best CIO. But, spe- you know. Specifically, Frank, how do you feel about giving Brad an award? Brad, <laughs> no. no. I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm all okay, for it. You're killing me, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a, a nice jar of M&Ms or something. Ooh, least. I like that it. sounds good. I'm yeah, hungry. Actually. I am too. It's lunchtime. So, um, no, another question for you that actually made me think of something because Brad's our tech guy. So we always talk, talk tech and I kind of let him handle that area. And we talk so much about Zoom and text and phone calls. But what else is there? I mean, there's so much other technology up there. What, what have you adopted to help from a leadership standpoint during COVID or just regardless to get you guys through COVID? Is there other technology that has helped? Yeah, you know, there's instant messaging. There's different platforms. Mm-hmm. If you know, if your colleagues are on Facebook or Instagram, uh, you know, we'd send memes to each other a lot. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes just being work related memes, of course, right? Of you course, know. yeah, of exactly. Course. Yeah, Actually, right. as long as they're appropriate and, and they're and, and <laughs> yeah, they don't get you serious, yeah. in mind. Yeah. The, the cat attorney. Uh, yeah. Right. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. Like something like that. It's funny. I mean, that was terrible for him, but yeah. it kind of provided this moment for all of us to, you know, have this collective sigh of relief and kind of have some humor. I, I know that. I don't know how many times somebody sent me that link and yeah. I don't know how many times people sent cat related memes for a while. And for about a week or so, it was kind of nice. It was very, it was kind of a break in the monotony of it all. Um, and, and we've so, all done it. Let's be honest. We've had our zoom mishaps, our technology right. mishaps. So he's not alone. Exactly. And so if you can find those moments and share that, share those with your team, that's a nice way of having and developing that camaraderie. Yeah, that's a good I have point. to say, I did laugh quite a bit at that one. Oh my God, I was dying. The, the poor Because his eyes, like yeah, you'd the, see his eyes and he's like, oh shit. I feel like I could feel his emotion I know. in those cat eyes. I really, I connected <laughs> and once with that his guy, cat eyes. And once the guy up top finally showed a little emotion, I was yeah. like, yes. <laughs> 
Yeah, those two other guys didn't break a smile. I was like, no. wow. I know. I, I was like, how? <laughs> I, I couldn't have done it. I would have laughed. I, I just, yeah. especially with, I, I'm good to proceed, or we're good to proceed, I or something. I am not like a cat. That. I am not a cat. We can go. We can go. <laughs> Frank, have you ever done anything like that? Did you mess up anything really big with Zoom or anything? Any you no, know, no. I've uh, for a while we were at home, uh, and you know our dogs would start barking. That was, you know, I, I think uh, we also we've become much more patient with each other because yeah. a lot of people are at home, so you have crying babies and gapping dogs and people at the door and yeah. you know, Verizon or whatever person coming in. And so uh, I think we become much more sensitive and appreciative of all that. Yeah. Do you use Verizon? Was that a plug? Are you happy uh, with their plug, services? That, that, that is one of our services. I, I was, a Verizon guy did come to our house one day. So that's <laughs> Are I, you happy with Verizon? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Nice, nice. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. Um, so, yeah, and to wrap this up a little bit, I think this was a really good conversation. And what I like to end with is what are some some simple steps, Frank, that you think firms who maybe haven't come as far as you guys maybe have, maybe have from a leadership perspective, what are some simple things that they can put into play today to really help, you know, uh, raise the leadership within their firm, regardless of being, you know, virtual, hybrid, in person, whatever? Yeah, I think everybody needs to be assigned to somebody. I think every, like everybody needs to be accounted for in your team and everybody needs to keep an eye on someone. And so depending on what size of your firm, you know, dip, you know, that can take some some work. But, you know, everybody in our team, you know, we always look out for them. We make sure that their interests are being taken care of. And if you have a team that you're supporting, they're going to support you and your firm and your clients. So it's important that nobody falls through the cracks and that everybody is accounted for. And so whatever system or mechanism you have in place that works best for you and your company, your firm, uh, you need to figure that out and implement it so that on a regular basis, you're having touch points with your team members. Uh, you're making sure that their needs are being met so that they're meeting the needs of your clients. And, you know, it, it's different. You know, every we're, we're a small firm. You know, it's like 10 of us, so it's easier for us to do. If you're a much larger organization, that may become a bit more bureaucratic, but you still have to have some system in place to make sure that happens. Yeah, definitely. I can see that. Yeah. The buddy system. <laughs> it, really, yeah. Tried and true. I like it. Brad, any last words? No, I really like what uh, you were talking about, Frank, from a leadership perspective. Picking up on the cues on your team members, that is so important. Yeah, uh, It's just taking that effort to really reaching back out, like what you were saying, text them, hey, is everything okay? It really makes the world of difference. And, you know, like Lauren, you had said, it, we are trying more and more during this pandemic, but just a little bit while longer, guys. We're yeah. almost through this. That was deep. Thank you. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We I can. know. We can see it. And I read an article yesterday that some doctors actually think we're a lot closer to herd immunity than the government is saying. Yeah, they're saying Which it, I'll take. I think it was in the Wall Street Journal. It was. Right, yeah. It was. April. I'm going to go with that. I, I feel much more comfortable with them than with, whatever. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to go for it because I'm sick of this. So, <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Frank, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It was really me. great. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Lex Factor, and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Lex Factor. Lexicon takes care of business so you can take care of law. Learn how to build a better practice at lexiconservices.com.